This is Cashflow Ninja, episode 246 with Mike Dillard. Welcome to the Cashflow Ninja, the podcast sharing how to create income streams and manage, multiply, and protect your wealth in the new economy. Here is your host inside the dojo, MC Laubscher. Hello, Cashflow Ninjas. MC Lobster here, and welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Ninja. I have a great show for you today. In today's show, we're going to look at how to build your business, build your wealth, and live your dream. I'm honored to have on the show today someone that I've been following for a long time, uh, someone that I've studied, and someone that I've considered to be a mentor to me, Mike Dillard. Mike Dillard is an entrepreneur in Austin, Texas. He built his first million-dollar business by the age of 27, teaching small business owners how to effectively market their products and services online using attraction marketing strategies. In 2010, he founded a financial education company in order to teach others how to achieve financial freedom through investment strategies commonly reserved for the wealthy. Combined, these businesses have produced more than $50 million in revenue without outside funding. In 2017, Mike developed the world's first fully automated hydroponic system for food production, Evergrow. His primary company today is Self Make Man, which provides the knowledge and skills entrepreneurs need in order to achieve their goals in life and business. Please share your feedback and thoughts on today's interview. You can let me know your thoughts on Twitter by tweeting me at MC Lobsher or by email at info at cashflowninja.com. And please remember to join our mailing list by signing up at cashflowninja.com or texting cashflow ninja to 44222. To ensure you never miss one of our episodes, you can download our free interactive smartphone apps on the Apple and Google Play app stores. I've also created a Cashflow Ninja investment group where I share opportunities that I'm investing in with my fellow investors. If you're interested in joining this group, please email me at info at cashflowninja.com and we will continue the conversation to see if you're a good fit for our group. I've always thought that if there are only a handful of people that have built indestructible wealth in any economy and market, why are we following the advice and doing what the majority of people are doing that are struggling financially? My friend Dave Zook says, you can be conventional or you can be wealthy, but you need to pick one. At the Real Asset Invest, Dave and his company create value for investors looking for high yield returns from real estate ventures domestically and internationally. To learn more about the exciting investment opportunities the Real Asset Investor offers, such as the syndication opportunity at the Mahogany Bay Village in Belize, investment opportunities in the multifamily space in the United States, and ATM syndication opportunities, visit cashflowninja.com forward slash real asset investor. Are you interested in real estate investing but don't know where to start? Join Ops Properties is the premier provider of turnkey lease option investment properties. With their proven system, you can have cash flow within 30 days. To get cash flow within 30 days, go to joinopsproperties.com. The wealthiest investors on the planet know how to capture their wealth and leverage it to perpetually grow it. If you're interested in learning the premier strategies of the wealthiest individuals and families on the planet, you can access an educational webinar at cashflowninja.com forward slash be the bank. Mike, welcome to the show. Uh, glad to be here. Looking forward to it. Yeah, very excited to have you on. Uh, can you share a little bit about your background and journey with my listeners? Oh my goodness. I just turned 40. I got my start as an entrepreneur in uh, college. So 18, 19, 20 years old. That was way back in web 1.0 days before YouTube, MySpace, even video on the internet. And uh, at that point, I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I didn't exactly know what I wanted to do. I found the network marketing industry, which was kind of the only option that was available to you know, uh, a young kid in college who wanted to start a business. <clears throat> um, I pursued that industry uh, successfully for five or six years and really had an opportunity to introduce that world to internet marketing strategies. So I kind of made a name for myself by teaching folks how to generate leads online, how to use sales presentations online to sell their products or their business. 
did that for a few years. 2012, I launched a financial education company similar to what you're doing um, that was very successful. And, you know, that really started as a solution to my own personal problem, which was a lack of, um, you know, knowledge when it came to investing. My company had made eight figures and I had no idea what to do with the money other than buying cars and houses and boats and, and essentially blowing it as any single guy in his twenties, you know, was likely to do. Um, and, um, I dabbled in the hydroponic food industry three years ago, invented a automated hydroponic system to grow your food in your house called Evergrow. And today my biggest, uh, business is self-made man and growing that as an education platform. And a great educational platform and, and podcast. Uh, I love the show and uh, the educational company that you're referring to as well, Mike. Uh, the Elevation Group was a member of that and the content that you put out was uh, was just uh, fantastic and uh, something that, that wasn't necessarily out there and it's not easy to find, right? Uh, one thing that I've noticed from your businesses is that this is all uh, – personal struggles that you have or challenges that you were trying to solve for yourself. Uh, what were some of uh, the other epiphanies that you had while you were creating your first business? And how did you, um, after identifying these problems and challenges that you want to solve, how did you get started with that? Sure. You know, that's how all of my businesses have begun. I had a challenge personally that I could not find a solution for. There was nothing out on the market that solved it. And so I was basically left with, uh, you know, the fact that I needed to be the one to, to create that solution. So back in my network marketing days when I was early, I was extremely shy. I hated the idea of selling. I did not have a lot of personal confidence and yet I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And if you're going to build a business, rule number one is you have to sell. If you're not bringing in cash flow, you don't have a business. So how do you reconcile those two? those two factors. Um, well, I, I did it unsuccessfully for five years. I didn't make a dime. And I finally realized that instead of going out and pursuing people, cold calling lead lists, going to networking events, hotel meetings, and things like that, I needed to figure out a way to get people to come to me, which is what I was much more comfortable with. And uh, that really led me to discover the direct response marketing world through guys like Dan Kennedy and what the skill of copywriting was. And all of a sudden, I realized that, hey, I could learn how to write sales copy that would do all of the selling and telling for me. And I literally wouldn't have to talk to anyone, but I could still sell product, make money, and build a business. And so that's what I did. Um, learned how to use Google AdWords, learned how to, to write sales copy, uh, wrote an instruction manual for my team that had finally started to grow because I was all of a sudden generating leads. People would read a sales letter. Uh, they'd call me up and say, I have a question, but other than that, I'm basically ready to get started. And within a, a year, I'd become the number one distributor in the network marketing company I was a part of, wrote a instruction manual for my team on how to essentially use attraction marketing. That turned into a, a book uh, that I sold for 40, 40 bucks a copy online. Uh, within three months, I was making around fifty, sixty thousand dollars a month just in sales from that book that I had printed at Kinko's um, once a month, and so that was kind of the beginning of of my career. But all of my businesses have stemmed from solving my own personal challenges, and I think that's important because you it's easy to find a motivation when that's the case. Um, it's easy to find inspiration to create a better solution than what you can or cannot find in the marketplace. And it's also pretty easy to look out at the market and see what exists out there, but what the shortcomings are. That was the case with the hydroponic system that I, I built. There were a few hydroponic farms, essentially, you could use to grow your food in your kitchen at home, but they were very flawed in my opinion. They were uh, not automated. They required a lot of manual work. The design, I thought, was, was horrific, um, but this was a topic I was passionate about, and I wanted to take this product, essentially, which was proven to sell. The company was profitable and making money, and I just wanted to make a better version of that and to fix all the flaws, uh, which is what we ended up doing with Evergrow. So um, that's kind of been the formula that I've relied upon. 
I love how you strategically attack from going and hunting down, um, building your team in network marketing. You became the hunted and people were drawn to you because of that one skill set that you acquired. So that was a skill set that separated you and aligned with your personality of who you are and where you fit in and knowing your strengths and your weaknesses. And then the other thing is then that basically, uh, started growing the business. So your business is growing at that point. It's becoming profitable. There's cash flow coming in. What were some of the biggest lessons that you learned after establishing that business and getting it off the ground uh, and then to scale it? Yeah, that's, you know, still remained one of one of the biggest challenges out there. Again, if from a personality perspective, building a team is not my, uh, it's not my strength. I prefer to work from home you know, in solitude, essentially in front of my computer. And I like to think and I like to write. And that's how I'm wired. That's when I'm most productive. And so having a team in an office and going through that evolution was a big challenge because um, it's not how uh, I'm, I'm naturally built to run. So so that's been that's been an interesting challenge. But at the end of the day, if you do not go down that road and you, if you do not learn how to essentially backfill your role in the business, you hit a ceiling. Um, for me, that ceiling has been around $10, $10 million uh, a year. And that's a great business for one person to run with two customer service agents. But if you want to build a $100 million business, you're going to have to build a team. You're going to have to figure that out. And it's an entirely new skill set. Uh, you know, plug into the books that are available for that plug into strategic coach or EO entrepreneurs organization. And uh, it's almost like starting over from scratch, but, but that's what's required. Yeah, that was one of the lessons that I learned from you and you and uh, Robert were uh, just doing some things together too and scaling and growing it uh, with the EV with the EVG group. Uh, this company, by the way, um, is where it started as a personal diary for my listeners that are not aware of it, where you flew around the country and interviewed uh, the wealthiest people uh, in the United States and in the world. You spent some time on Necker Island with Richard Branson as well. What were some of the biggest lessons that you've learned and similarities that all these people uh, had in common? Uh, and what were some of the uh, success principles that you picked up from them? Sure. So the goal was to go out and interview and learn from <clears throat> entrepreneurs and investors who'd, ex who'd successfully bridge the gap. Because it's very easy to find information about how to make money in this world. Uh, I mean, it's, it's everywhere. But there's very few people who are talking about what to do with that money once you make it. And what I realized is that if you don't have a plan, that money will disappear very quickly. If you start to build a business that generates a lot of cash flow, you start to take it for granted. Um, oh, yeah, I'll go buy that new $200,000, you know, car uh, because I know next month I'm on track to make, you know, four or $500,000 in my business. And so you start to, again, take that cash flow for granted. And that leads to decisions that are probably not in your best interest over the long term. So the biggest takeaway that I... I received through that company and that process in those, those interviews was to have a plan and to stick to the plan. If your goal is to build a real lasting wealth and real financial freedom to where essentially your assets are producing more passive income, you know, than, than your monthly expenses um, and your business specifically, then, then you're free. But in order to do that, You've got to be very strategic with the money that you do have available, how you deploy it, how you protect it. Because I got to tell you, you know, properly investing a million dollars uh, in a way that, that reaches those goals can be a lot more difficult than uh, making that million bucks. Uh, and I've heard that from a lot of folks is that keeping the money is actually harder than making it. And, and that has been absolutely true in my experience as well. So biggest piece of advice Make a plan, sit down with uh, you know a financial advisor that you feel is qualified to get you to where you want to go, and then just stick to that plan. And if you do nothing else, you'll be successful. You're going to hit your numbers. If you don't have a plan, you're going to find ways to blow the money. You're going to buy cars. You're going to buy toys. You're going to buy liabilities, and you're going to be you're going to be toast a year from now. Um, so that was uh, that was the big takeaway.
Yeah, it's quite amazing how uh, holding on to it and protecting it is harder than in some instances and in actually making it. One of the things that we've talked about too is creating something uh, within a wealth plan of uh, a wealth plan being anti-fragile, meaning weathering the next massive storm coming in uh, and look, just looking all across of what we're doing and how our businesses are built to be able to not only survive this this coming storm but also thrive in the storm. Now you learned a lot of lessons in 2008 and 2009, and that. Uh, after that crisis was actually one of the things that spurs you to to start the the elevation group what are some of the things that you're looking at right now as far as the global economy and then also uh, what are you doing to preserve your wealth for a potentially another storm hitting the shores you know that was one of the biggest lessons i've i've learned over the last you know, five, six, seven years during this process. Because when I started EVG, it was in 2012. So we're, we're off the, I'm sorry, 2010, December 2010. So we're just on the heels of the collapse, right? Everybody's still being affected by it. Everybody's still very leery of it. And everybody's trying to figure out what to do next so that they don't have to, you know, take the hit that they, that they took in 2008, 2009. And you know, a lot of very, 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 very smart people were screaming from the rooftops and the mountaintops that this is just the beginning. It's going to get worse. We've got, we've got the, the, the debt. We've got, uh, you know, an unsustainable amount of essentially debt, right? A couple of, what, $15 trillion, I think it is now. <laughs> it's, um, it's insane. We've got the baby boomers, which are aging. They're going to have to start pulling their money out of the market. And you know, guys like Kiyosaki and Mike Maloney and Peter Schiff and all these folks were like, buy gold and silver, buy gold and silver. This is going to be the greatest wealth transfer in the history, you know, of the world, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, here we are in 20, essentially 2018 now, and, and that never materialized. And so the big lesson for me was that there's a lot of really smart people out there and they may have the data to back them up, but they still can't predict uh, what's going to happen or when. And so blindly following folks like that and relying on their expertise was, uh, was a really expensive lesson learned. Uh, you know, I made a lot of good money in gold and silver because I got in early. But at the same time, here we are, if that money, if I'd kept it there, uh, you know, I'd still be flat and would have wasted, you know, gosh, eight years now, right? So um, I don't get attached to stories like that anymore. And what's really interesting is I think we're seeing that wealth transfer happen today. I just happen to think that it's all moving into crypto uh, instead of gold and silver, which is really, really interesting to watch. Um, so I think I have a much more mature outlook when it comes to an investing strategy. And one of the most valuable pieces of advice I ever got during that project was a discussion with Mark Ford, who He's a very successful entrepreneur, and he said, Mike, you're an entrepreneur. Your ability to become wealthy is tied to your ability to build a business and generate cash flow. It's a very unique skill set most people don't have, and that's how you become wealthy. Your job from an investment standpoint is to simply not lose the money that you make. Uh, where most people, it's the opposite. They have a limited amount of fixed income from a, a job, and if they want to get rich, their only hope is to do it through uh, you know, in investments. So that was a huge eye opener for me as well. I, and I, that's the stance I really take on it today is the money that comes in. I want to make sure that I don't lose it. Um, so I tend to invest in cash flow assets, apartment complexes, cash flow businesses. I did put some money in crypto. I got, I started investing in crypto and Bitcoin back in 2013, 2014, when it was like 50 bucks, a hundred bucks. Um, <laughs> And in that regard, I've gotten very lucky, right? So, um, but you can't rely on that. And folks who are getting into that that space today, personally, I still think there's a long way for it to go. But at the same time, I'm not counting on that, you know, to get rich on. Uh, essentially, that's what my business is for. So I focus on that and invest that money in assets that produce more cash flow, ideally that have tangible assets attached to them like real estate. And, you know, I own a, a gun range here in, in downtown Austin, I own a 
a man camp uh, out in West Texas in the oil fields and uh, things like that, right? So those will never go to zero. You're listening to Mike Dillard on the Cashflow Ninja podcast. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. This is MC Laubscher, the host of the Cashflow Ninja podcast. As you may know, I'm also the president and chief wealth strategist of Alhalla Wealth Financial. We help individuals, families, small businesses, entrepreneurs, and professionals build their wealth outside of Wall Street and help investors maximize the use of every dollar in their personal economy and boost their investment gains. We do this by combining the capital and investments with the financial vehicle of the wealthy according to the infinite banking concept. If you're interested to learn more about privatized banking and the infinite banking concept, you can access an exclusive webinar at cashflowninja.com forward slash be the bank. You're listening to Mike Dillard on the Cashflow Ninja podcast and now back to our interview. And you touched on so many things right now, that which is great takeaways here. The first thing being that you're, you focused on your core competencies and that skill set and the ability that you have, uh, and that's creating these businesses uh, and generating income that way. Then you've also uh, found a place to warehouse your wealth that you can leverage that to put into cash flow businesses because the money from the, the businesses that you generate have to go, it has to go somewhere. It has to be warehoused somewhere and then utilized. Uh, so you've uh, kind of set that up. And then there's also other uh, factors that play into that. What I like about what you also said, Mike, is I bring people on uh, the show. Some people think the, the, the Dow is going to 100,000. Some people think it'll be 3,000 with many different perspectives because that's one of the things that I learned as well from the last crisis is that there's a lot of voices out there, but you've got to be exposed to everything and uh, hear all types of opinions um, and then figure it out for yourself. And on the crypto, which is quite amazing that around the same time, a lot of people were looking for solutions, how to position themselves, how to protect their wealth better. Kind of very, very interesting that in 2009, uh, someone named Satoshi Nakamoto wrote the code for Bitcoin, right? Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, that's the biggest opportunity. It's kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity right now. Um, and I think part of, part of becoming wealthy and, uh, you know, playing this game right is paying attention. All of the folks, I have a lot of friends who are extremely successful, uh, extremely smart, and none of them have been paying attention. Even when I've been talking about cryptos for three or four years now, they're like, eh, whatever, eh, whatever. And now they're finally buying in, right? <laughs> so, right. Um, yeah, paying attention is critical. You have to seek out the knowledge and the solution to your problems proactively and consciously. And I think that's what differentiates folks who ultimately uh, end up building a lot of wealth and becoming successful versus you know middle class. And uh, as you mentioned, staying on top of our changing environments because it, we're so interconnected right now with the internet being connected to the entire world. And now as money has basically become code and data, <laughs> things are about to move even faster. So uh, keeping an eye on your money and understanding what is going on in our environment is absolutely cardinal. And yeah. one of the things to do that is, is obviously keeping on studying and learning. I know you're a lifelong learner and always looking to increase and update existing skill sets and add new ones. What are you currently studying right now? What skill sets are you trying to acquire? Uh, and what are you excited about uh, heading into the new year? You know, for me, it goes back to scaling again. My, my goal with Self Made Man is to turn this into a company and an asset I can sell in, in three to four years. Uh, traditionally, all of the businesses that I've ever built in the education space are dependent upon me, right? I'm the author, I'm the leader, I'm the face, I'm the name. And there's advantages to that, primarily, uh, primarily, which is that it's a very easy business to start. Um, you know, writing an ebook or building a course and selling that online is one of the simplest businesses that you can possibly begin. The challenge is, is that you can never sell it. It's a treadmill you can't get off of because it's you, it's your name, it's your following, and you're not going to sell that to anyone else and they're not going to buy it from you, right? So, uh, having done that for 10, 12 years now, my goal is to finally build a, a business that uh, that I can have an exit from. And so in order to do that with self-made man, uh, I've got to go back to, to that whole team building, uh, component of, of building a company and building a business. So I'm reading, you know, books like, uh, you know, scale it and rocket fuel, um, traction. I'm just looking at my, my 
desk library wall here, uh, scaling up by Vern Harnish, uh, you know, uh, Simon Sinek, uh, Leaders Eat Last. And so just going out and acquiring those skill sets uh, is really my primary focus uh, at this point. One of the questions that I ask my guest on the show, and it's something that I've learned from families of how they transfer wealth onto uh, the next generation and the next generation and not only become good custodians of that wealth, but they exponentially grow it, was that they didn't just transfer the money from one generation to another, but also a wealth of knowledge and then values and principles. And since a core message in our show is to leave our families and communities in the world better than we found it by passing down mindset values and principles to those future generations. If you cannot pass on any money to future generations and we're only allowed to pass on three principles to them to build wealth and achieve happiness and success, what would they be? You know, I think first is is seek out knowledge, right? You have to proactively seek out knowledge and a solution to your problems um, proactively. And so I think really driving that home would be incredibly important. Uh, you know, next, I, I think that, you know, the build products and create things that help others is uh, a really big piece of that. If you focus on providing solutions that help other people, you, the money will automatically come and doing that in a way that, uh, you know, there's essentially integrity, you know, around, right. Not ripping people off or whatever it may be, I think is critical. Uh, and then third, I would have to, probably say something along the lines of, you know, lead by example, essentially, um, whether it's just an example to your family or an example to others, like, you know, your students, your customers, whatever it may be. I think taking a, a position as a teacher and an educator and a leader with any group of people is, is incredibly important because it, it puts a burden on you from a responsibility perspective and integrity perspective that I think, you know, makes you ultimately a better individual. Uh, as well as all the people who are going to benefit from the knowledge that you're sharing and the example that you're setting. So I don't know. Those are those are the three that, that pop into my head if I had to if I had to pull them out here today and, and decide on those. Fantastic, and thank you for sharing them. And one thing that I've uh, seen you've done through the years of, is is you have a very high value on mentorship and mentors that have helped you along. Uh, can you speak a little bit to that? Well, you can't. Uh, you know, it's ironic. I have I have a company called Self Made Man and. You get up. Uh, I, I guess it depends on what what your definition of that is. And you know, for me, I think becoming self made is a decision that each of us have to make as individuals to essentially take responsibility and ownership for our destiny, right? And I think once you make that decision, then you are dependent upon and have to go out and seek the help of others. And the single biggest shortcut in life is through through mentors. Um, I mean, I everything I know has come from other individuals uh, before me. So there's something that I call the stupid tax that every single one of us pays every day in one way or another. And when someone wants to be an entrepreneur, it's pretty funny. They, they say, hey, Mike, I want to build a successful business and make money and fire my boss, but I don't want to spend you know $1,500 on a course or $2,000 on a course. I'm like, hey, great you're going to pay the stupid tax one way or another. So just pick which option you would like. You're either going to pay money in the form of a course in, a, in the form of education from mentors, or you're going to pay money in the form of uh, mistakes, you know, being defrauded, making, making bad decisions, having to start over, you know, a year from now or whatever it may be. Either way, the price will be paid. Um, but there's a, a, a much better one. One of, one of those options is much better than the other. And so that's why I always, always invest in my education. I think uh, a couple of years ago, I was paying close to hundred grand a year in the form of courses and mastermind groups that I was a part of. Um, and that always pays back. I've never gone into one of those situations or put money into something like that where I've regretted it and not taken back you know, five to 10x what I put into it. Um, so that's the quickest shortcut there is. Absolutely. I've learned a lot from you, my friend, in that regard as well, being a former Elevation Income student and a Mike Dillard student. So I definitely uh, share that same that same view where um, uh, everything that you've basically uh, learned during forming and doing your businesses, you were putting out the content there and then also in your courses. So appreciate uh, you taking the time to connect. Uh, it's been an honor to have you on the show and you've played a huge influence uh, in in my learning 
and uh, build, uh, building my business. So I just want to thank you for that. Mike, uh, where can my listeners learn more about you and uh, get in touch with you and listen to your amazing podcast? Yeah, just go to MikeDillard.com. Everything is there um, that I've been working on for the last few years and the podcast and Evergrow and all of that good stuff. So that would be great. Awesome, Mike. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your journey and your knowledge and providing so much value for my listeners. It's been a blast having you on. Absolutely. Well, thanks for having me so much. And uh, I appreciate everybody listening. Thanks a lot. Thank you for joining my guest, Mike Dillard, and myself on the Cashflow Ninja today. If you like what you hear and appreciate what we're trying to build here at the Cashflow Ninja, please subscribe, rate, and review our show on iTunes and share our show with family, friends, and your network. I'm always trying to learn and improve in every area of my life. So if there's any way that I can provide more value for you and serve you better, please reach out to me at info at cashflowninja.com. If you're not a subscriber to the Cashflow Ninja Gosh Good Newsletter, you can sign up for our newsletter at cashflowninja.com or text Cashflow Ninja to 442. Smart investors know that the banks actually don't own most automatic teller machines. In fact, the opportunity for private investment provides stellar passive returns, figures in the double digits, with the added bonus that most of the income is tax-free. Who wants to walk blindly past an ATM and not cash in on that opportunity? ATM machine ownership brings you a steady stream of hands-off passive income. Dave Zook and the Real Asset Investor team have been providing opportunities for investors in this up training activity of ATM use. If you are an accredited investor and would like more information on how you can invest in this exclusive asset class that very few investors will ever have access to, you can sign up for your free webinar on how to create income streams from ATMs at cashflowninja.com forward slash real asset investor. Jimmy Freeland and Bob Scott have been in your shoes and have used real estate investing to create passive income and become financially free. In just over three years, they've created a lease option empire with over 170 properties. They can show you how to do the same. To get cash flow within 30 days, go to joinopsproperties.com. You can also check them out on YouTube. Just search Join Ops Properties or call Jimmy and Bob at 314-799-2247. The wealthiest investors on the planet know how to capture their wealth and leverage it to perpetually grow it. If you're interested in learning the premier strategies of the wealthiest individuals and families on the planet, you can access an educational webinar at cashflowninja.com forward slash be the bank. That's our show for today, everyone. Until next time, live a life of passion and purpose on your terms. This presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. The information being presented and considered does not consider your particular financial objectives or situation, and it does not make personalized recommendations. This material is not intended to replace the advice of a qualified tax and legal advisor or other qualified professionals, and you should not use the information in place of a customized consultation with a licensed professional regarding your specific personal financial objectives, situation and needs. We believe the information provided is reliable, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, timeliness, or completeness.